and welcome to the Sacramento Public Library Authority Board. Today's date is December 14, 2023, and it is 3.05 p.m., and this meeting is hereby called to order. And at this time, I'm going to ask our clerk if she would please call the roll and establish quorum and read the public statement. Sean Lulowy. Here. Karina Talamantes. Katie Valenzuela. Here. Katie Maple. Mai Vang. Here. Phil Cerna. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Sue Frost. Here. Pat Hume. Mary Jane Lopez Taff. Here. Rod Brewer. Here. Kevin Spees. Sean Farmer. Garrett Gatewood. Here. Ina Lefkowitz. Oh. Saul Hernandez. Here. And that's a quorum with eight members present. Okay, thank you. I'll read the statement. This meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.satcounty.net. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, December 16th at 4 p.m. on channel 14 and can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available upon request no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should complete a speaker identification form located at the back table and give it to the clerk. Members attending via Zoom should raise their hand in the Zoom program Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everyone may be heard. Thank you. Director Brewer, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Yes. Right hand over your heart, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, um, item two is public comment on uh, matters not on the agenda. And we, we have no speakers, so thank you very much. And for presentations, we have our friends of the Sacramento Public Library, and I'm not able to see those that are on the Zoom um, and so if you are here from the Friends of the Public Library, if you Levon could just... Levon Grace is here. Levon. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share. My name is Devon Graves, and I'm the current vice president for the Friends of the Sacramento Public Library. Um, not much to report, but wanted to first uh, just uh, give a shout out to our book den that is continuing its efforts to... Um, have book bag sales, have opportunities for the community to come in and support the friends through book purchases. Um, our membership is uh, continuing to be at its highest it's been in two years, so we're excited about that, and our youth memberships are at the highest it's been since the past uh, two years, so we still have a lot of work to do to continue to get folks signed up to be members of the friends, but uh, the numbers um, look promising. I wanna shout out uh, two of our uh, affiliates who have done some awesome work recently. So our Arden, um, Arden Demick and North Highlands um, Antelope Friends have uh, two had two events recently to get books into the community. Um, Arden Demick had a um, children's book giveaway. They had about 160 children and parents show up and participate in that. So again, just an example of the work that the friends are out there doing and, and continuing to be involved with the community. Um, when, as we look ahead for next year, uh, the biggest thing on our calendar in the new year is on February 25th, we have our annual meeting, our all friends meeting where we'll do our treasurer training for the year. And then we will have the election of our officers and board members. So with that, we're going to keep kind of plugging ahead, doing the work that we do, but um, it's a partnership. So we want to thank our colleagues um, at the library who continue to um, 
be with us on this journey. And then we want to thank the JPA for an awesome year. And we're looking forward to the new year and reflecting on the great work that we've done and that we hope to continue to do. Happy to take any questions at this time. Hey, Devon, uh, that you always give such great reports. <laughs> I want to ask you, you said you have a, an annual treasurer's training. That's you, do, do all the board members receive that training? Yeah, so we encourage all the affiliates to send their treasurer and their president to our all friends meeting. And um, so we have a treasurer training for um, our boards. Most of the time at the beginning of the year, they have their election of new officers. And so then they send them to our all friends meeting where they get trained on how to do the budget, um, how to uh, uh, work on taxes and stuff like that. So all that to keep the organization moving forward. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, we really appreciate um, your dedication to the library authority. Um, I can't, um, it's hard to really count the ways that the friends of the libraries help out, not just financially, but in, you know, in spirit, um, engaging with the community and getting involved. So congratulations to Arden Demick and North Highlands um, for those efforts and Thank you so much. And I see um, Le uh, Director Levku it's had some comments to make. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, Devon, I'm with the uh, trustee on the County Board of Education. And I met with our librarian over at our juvenile hall today. We run the school in juvenile hall and she gave you a big shout out for your the support of the Friends of the Library for the uh, Juvenile Hall Library and the books that you all help us purchase and also to the staff at the library. So I just wanted to convey that um, to you during this time. Thank you. Thank you, Director Lefkowitz. And thank you, Devon. I don't see any other uh, directors in the queue. Do we have any public comment on this item? No public comment. And so with that, uh, thank you, Devon, for a great another great report. I hope the friends of the library have a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Okay, uh, our next item is closed session. We're, we're going to be recessing to closed session to discuss public employee performance evaluation, government code 54957B1. Um, title library director and so at this time we will adjourn to or recess to close session and we'll be back shortly and I'm assuming our callers will be zoomed in or dialed in as well okay thank you and we are meeting in hearing room number one
Okay, at this time we will reconvene our meeting out of closed session and I'll ask our authority board council to, if there's a report out. Uh, there's no reportable action at this time. Uh, I did receive direction to bring a contract amendment for consideration at the January meeting. Great, thank you very much. All right, uh, our next item is item number five, executive team report. And do we have a report, Peter, or is it just a receive and file? It looks like we just... Um, yeah, Madam Chair, um, I, don't not, I don't need to belabor what's in the written report. Um, it's there. Um, I did just want to highlight that we are moving forward with a number of the building projects that we received from funding from the Forward Together Infrastructure Grant. So those projects will um, be moving fairly quickly with our jurisdiction. Actually, they're both City of Sacramento. Um, and so we'll be bringing more information to the board in the coming months about those. Um, but because of the deadline with the expenditure of the funds from the state, those projects can move a little quicker than most building projects. Um, so I just want the authority to be aware that we'll be bringing multiple updates over the next two years on these projects. Um, so just be prepared for lots of really good news about those. Oh, wow. I'm sure yeah. no one's going to complain about that. I, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Okay. And do we have any public comment on that item? No public comment. I keep asking and I keep getting a no from you guys. Okay. Madam, um, sorry, yes. Madam Chair. I, oh. I, I didn't, I misspoke. There's one thing I'd like to highlight if you don't okay. mind. Sure. Um, the statistics for the library for the year to date, I just wanted to highlight the, the growth that we're seeing over the last couple of years and people coming back to the library. And one statistic I wanted to highlight is our new card holders. Um, that number has increased 28% over where it was before the pandemic. So we have, we're getting a lot more new people coming and using the library, um, which I think is a great um, uh, a boon to us. And we're doing a lot more to encourage new homeowners and people who have moved, letting them know that the library is around. We have a service that sends out notices to those folks. So I think we're seeing really great results from letting people know the library is here. Um, and so we're looking forward to that continued growth of new card holders. Did you just say 28% over before the pandemic? That's correct, ma'am. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. It's incredible, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So we're looking forward to- What do you to, attribute that to? I think part of it is, is our efforts of um, notifying people, that the new homeowners and people who are moving in the area. I think that, and I think um, our social media with our marketing team is, is doing really well and reaching a new audience. Oh, congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. Okay, our next item is uh, informational. Item six, a monthly financial report, 6.2 quarterly treasures report. I wonder if anyone has any questions. I see Johnny A. E. in the, um, in the chambers regarding that I see no hands uh, raised, and I wonder if there's any public comment on this item. No public comment, and so we will move on to the next item, which uh, is, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Johnny, thanks for all the hard work. Uh, we are still healthy. I remember when I first got on this board, we were not healthy at all. And I think truly it's because of his hard work and everything we've come that these meetings are fast, efficient, and now I feel like we're in a very, very good place. So thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Director Gatewood, and thank you, Johnny, as always. Okay, our next item is consent. And I don't know if I need to read all of these. Do I? Some okay. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Director Gatewood and a second um, close squeezed in the lead with uh, Director Lalowe. And um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, wait, we need to do a roll call vote uh, because we have people call in on the call. Sean Lalowe? Aye. Karina Talamantes? Katie Valenzuela? Yes. Katie Maple? Mai Vang? Yes. Phil Cerna? Patrick Kennedy, Rich Desmond, Sue Frost. Aye. Pat Hume, Mary Jane Lopez-Taff. Yes. 
Todd Brewer. Aye. Kevin Spees. Sean Farmer. Garrett Gatewood. Aye. Dana Lefkowitz. Yes. Paul Hernandez. Aye. And motion passes with eight members present. Thank you. Our next item is uh, item number 8.1, contract amendment, amend and restate the joint use agreements between the Sacramento Public Library Authority and the River Delta Unified School District. Uh, Chair Frost, I'll defer to Deputy Director Keller to share this item. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so these agreements renew the operating agreements we have for use of the Cortland and the Isleton libraries. So those are provided to us by the River Delta Unified School District. And basically what these agreements have done is we have aligned them in accordance with our joint powers authority where previous agreements had not been in alignment. So it brings us up to date and also gives us an additional 10 years in both uh, facilities. Okay, do we have any questions? Uh or comments from board? I, I am seeing none, so I'll ask if there are any public comments on this item. And so I'll uh, come back to the board for deliberation or a motion. Second. Uh, motion by Director Brewer, second by Director Gatewood. A roll call vote, please. Sean Lowy. Aye. Karina Talamantes. Katie Valenzuela? Yes. Mai Bang? Yes. Phil Cerna? Patrick Kennedy? Rich Desmond? Sue Frost? Aye. Pat Hume? Mary Jane Lopez Taft? Aye. Aye. Kevin Spees? Sean Farmer? Garrett Gatewood? Aye. Dina Lefkowitz? Yes. Bill Hernandez? Aye. <clears throat> Motion passes with eight members present. Thank you very much. Our next item is 8.2 annual audit report. I believe Johnny Yi is going to report out on that. Uh, so uh, uh, good afternoon, Chair Frost and uh, members of the board. Um, this item here is the annual Audit report for our fiscal year 22-23. Um, oops. Um, so before you are the uh, audited financial statements for uh, FY 22-23, um, I'm happy to report that we had a uh, successful year in close. Um, the audit is uh, has been completed. Um, overall, it was a, a smooth process. It was um, smooth audit. Never heard that term before. So smooth. Okay, fairly smooth. <laughs> um, the end result was an unqualified audit opinion um, indicating that the authority finances are, are in compliance with uh, GAAP, which is generally accepted accounting principles, and GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standard, Standard Board. Um, our internal controls are good, and there were no audit findings. So that's a, a very good um, you know, outcome, and it, it goes back to the, the hard work from the finance team and uh, the overall uh, library staff throughout, throughout the system. Um, so let's take a look at the numbers um, as, as shown on page pages 14 and 15 of the audit report. Um, so we have four major funds, um, the general fund ended the year at 8.8 .8 million, uh, county, Sacramento, county Sacramento fund at 39.9 million in fund balance, uh, city of Sacramento at 14 million and city of Sacramento parcel taxes, uh, measure X and B combined at 8.5 million. Um, and we do have a, you know, one small non-major fund. Um, this is a, what we call a permanent fund uh, found on page 15 of the audit report, uh, which ended the year at uh, a little bit over $300,000. So uh, the total combined fund balance um, was 62.5 million at the end of June 30, 2023. Um, taking a look at the county fund balances in more detail, um, so of the 30.9 million fund balance for the county branches, um, 12.7 million are for general branch expenditures, uh, 610,000 in the form of donations, um, 10.9 million in reserve for economic uncertainty and cash flow needs, and supplemental fund services at 6.3 million. 
um, and then deferred maintenance at roughly 400,000 and 21,000 for open contracts. Um, so those are um, mainly purchase orders. And looking at the supplemental fund uh, balances, um, so the 6.3 million uh, are broken down as follows. Um, uh, 7.8 million, I mean 3.8 million for the county uh, libraries on, on the unincorporated areas. Uh, 456,000 for the library at Citrus Heights. Uh, 1.2 million for Elk Grove libraries. Uh, 204,000 for Galt. Uh, 27,000 for Alton. And uh, 637,000 for the Rancho Cordova, li Cordova Library. Um, similarly, the the county Sacramento, I mean, the city of Sacramento fund balances are as follows: um, the city the city general fund ended the year at fourteen million, and fifty three thousand were um, donations, eleven point two million for general branch expenditures, and uh, reserved for economic uncertainty needs at two point five million, and uh, deferred maintenance at six hundred I mean two hundred sixty five thousand, um, and then on the parcel tax funds. Uh, this is the measure X and B combined. Uh, we ended the year at 7.1 million for parcel tax um, carryovers, uh, 12,500 for donations, and nearly 1.4 million for economic uncertainty reserves. Um, again, the, the uh, measure X and B combined ended the year at 8.5 million. Um, a couple of notable uh, liabilities. Um, the pension liabilities, as, as we reported on the GASB 68 and 71 um, on pages 14 and 15, uh, the library recorded a net pension liability in the amount of 24.3 million and related, related deferred outflows and inflows of um, 11 million and 265,000 respectively. Um, and these long-term liabilities are mainly reported in the government-wide financial statements. Um, and then Nodi Land provides additional details um, if you'd like to uh, take a look in more details. Um, and then on the OPEP liabilities, um, so these are other post-employment benefits on the GASB 75. Um, the library recorded a OPEP ob obligation in an amount of 7.3 million and deferred outflows of 441,000 and inflows of 1.5 million for uh, OPEP liabilities. And, and again, uh, these are recorded on the, uh, the, the government-wide financial statements and uh, note 12 provides additional info on the OPEP, plan, OPEP plans. Um, under operating leases, uh, we implemented GASB 87 in fiscal year 22. Um, again, continue to record um, lease, lease assets and liabilities. Um, at the end of June 30, 2020, June 30, 2023, the library recorded a right to use lease assets in the amount of 2.3 million and lease liabilities um, uh, 2.3 million as well. Uh, we have a small receivable in the amount of um, 326,000 and a deferred inflow of um, 313,000. Um, again, the, these are long-term liabilities and uh, <clears throat> they're recorded under the, the government-wide financial statements. Um, and then note, uh, note, footnote number eight uh, provides additional detail on leases. And new this year for uh, fiscal year 23 um, uh, under GASB 96 is what, what's known as subscription-based information technology arrangements, um, also known as MIDAs. Um, so the implementation was in fiscal year 22-23 um, this past fiscal year. Um, and then the library recorded a, a certain uh, 49,000 in right to use intangible lease assets and uh, related subscription liabilities in the amount of uh, 343, uh, 344,000. And SBITAs are mainly um, subscription software such as the library's um, CRO systems. Um, there's uh, a few other softwares that we, um, uh, subscribe services to uh, such as a human resources software um, iBoss is another one for malware and defense systems for um, IT needs. Um, again, the SBITAs are also recorded under the government-wide financial statements, and a number, footnote number nine provides additional detail on that as well, too. Um, so this schedule here, this is a little bit busier. Um, I, I wanted to <clears throat> um, compare what we 
what we call the modified accrual versus full accrual basis of accounting. Um, so throughout the year, the library records our governmental funds. Um, so under the modified accrual basis, um, this is where we, we record all the governmental funds, uh, which focuses on current available resources. And also this is where we do all of our budgeting needs uh, throughout the uh, fiscal year. Um, and then as noted earlier, the, the total ending fund balances uh, was $62.5 million um, within under the modified accrual basis of accounting. Um, and on the flip side, on the right hand side of the schedule, um, this is what we call the full accrual basis of accounting. Uh, this is where we record all the government wide financial statements, uh, focusing on all available resources. Um, so another way look, to look at this is um, this is very similar to private sector accounting where it, it's a you know, for, uh, for profit accounting. Um, so this is this includes capital assets. Um, and then any long term liabilities such as pension, uh, OPEB, accrued compensated absences, absences leases, and uh, new to the uh, schedules uh, uh, submitters. Um, so if you look at the bottom total, we ended the fiscal year at, for a, a total net position of 54.9 million. And of that amount, investment in capital assets was 15.8 million. Uh, restricted for county branches at 17.2 million, uh, restricted for city of Sacramento branches, uh, 7.7 .7 million, and the postal taxes at 4.7 million. Um, restricted for agency wide, uh, 4.7 uh, million, and unrestricted at 4.7 uh, million as well, too. So a total net uh, position of $54.9 million. And lastly, um, attachments A and B, governance letter and management letter. Um, happy to report that there were no dif difficulties encountered in performing the audit. Um, there were a few reclassifying journal entries for uh, leases and uh, submitter re uh, uh, recordings. Uh, there were no disagreements with management. <coughs> um, our books are clean. Uh, financially, our books are clean. And uh, there were no reportable issues identified. So that's it, the fiscal year 22-23 is a wrap and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Johnny. Uh, once again, you delivered a clean audit, which is a reflection of your work, your leadership and your team's hard work and thank you for that. I see uh, Director Lopez Taff in the queue for comments. Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, Johnny. Um, I know audits can be very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, with this size of operation, it, it I can imagine how lengthy it can be. I have one question for clarification, simply because I'm very, very new to the terminology. Can you talk a, bit, a little bit about the long term liabilities um, and and how this gets serviced? Because I'm looking at um, the thirty six million six twenty seven four sixty. And um, on page 12 of the report of uh, titled long-term liabilities, just uh, how do we service that and what does that mean long-term? Uh, so uh, thank, thank you for that question. So long-term liabilities are, um, you know, such as pension liabilities, um, other post-employment benefits, um, accrued compensated absences. Um, so these are ongoing long-term liabilities that are uh, previously was simply on the financial statement as a footnote, um, but then under GASB 68, um, it required agencies, uh, public agencies, to start recording uh, long-term liabilities under uh, the government-wide financial statements. Um, so look, look at long-term liabilities as um, uh, liabilities on the books, but it, we're, not, we're not paying it within the next two fiscal years. It, it's a long-term uh, type of liabilities. Um, and then on that last schedule, I don't know if I can bring it back, um, the comparison where under the full accrual and the modified accrual basis of counting, so the, the modified accrual, those are the governmental funds, so the, so the long-term liabilities are not recorded mm -hmm. in the governmental funds. And, and again, that's where we do all our budgeting needs and, um, let's see. yeah, here we go. So under the modified accrual, um, you'll see we, we ended the year with a fund balance of 62.5 million. And so these figures here are not including the long-term liabilities. Uh -huh. 
And on the right hand side, um, the full accrual, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is similar to private sector accounting where, uh, you know, it, it's a for profit type of, um, you know, presentation where we show all of the capital assets. So um, any fixed assets that we have, uh, infrastructures um, that the library owns, um, the, the lease assets, uh, uh, better assets, and then also we factor in the long term liabilities, which includes pension, OPEB, and accrued comp compensated absences. So those are pensions always a, a big amount within any uh, public agency. Um, I, I imagine the Citrus Heights it has a you know good size you know pension liability as well too. And then when you move to um, like the county level or the city of Sacramento, it's going to be a bigger number than uh, than what we have. Um, so and then help, me, help me understand. So if for some reason everyone were to retire, um, this would become due and payable in that full amount versus those retirees who are paying at this point. Um, so when 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 someone, I mean, if everybody were to re, to retire, and let's say if the library were to cease to exist, um, the the right hand schedule under the full accrual basis of accounting, um, you'll see that in yellow, um, there are 17.2 million that's available to cover all of our obligation all of our obligations. Um, conversely, on the modified accrual. Um, on the left hand side, you'll see a fund balance of 30.9 million. And, and again, that does not include, does not factor in the long term liabilities. That, that's why that's a big number. So, in concept, if um, the library continues to operate, then the fund balance is going to be 30.9 30 million. But if you want to truly know, okay, what's our net available resource? It would be uh, 17.2 million uh, you know, in total for the county on the county side. Thank you so much for indulging me in that explanation. Sure. Yeah. No. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Good questions. Thank you, Johnny. And thank you, Director Taff. Any other questions, comments? A motion to accept the audit. So moved. Second. So we have a motion by Director Gatewood and a second by Director Lalowi. And roll call vote, please. Sean Lalowi. Aye. Marina Talamantes. Katie Valenzuela. Yes. Katie Maple. Mai Vang. Yes. Bill Cerna. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Sue Frost. Aye. Pat Hume. Mary Jane Lopez Taff. Yes. Rod Brewer. Yes. Kevin Spees. Sean Farmer. Garrett Gatewood. Yes. Dina Lefkowitz. Yes. Paul Hernandez. Aye. The motion passes with eight members present. Thank you. And thank you, Johnny, for a great uh, report out. Uh, item nine is reports, ideas, questions from the board members. Seeing none, do you have anything to add, Peter, before we close our meeting? With that, it is 4.31. Oh, excuse me, Director Lalowi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, again, I just want to thank Peter and the rest of the staff. As we, we, I, we mentioned already, um, we were able to purchase a building in North Sac, and we also got approved for a grant. So a, a huge thank to the staff at the city level as well. Um, we, we got approved um, for a loan amounting to $7.2 million to rehab this building, which is going to be in North Sacramento uh, Library. So I'm very excited. and. You know, major thanks, as I said to Peter, um, the Friends of Library, the city staff, really without, you know, these collaborative well, um, work, I don't think we could have gotten this grant. So thank you so much. And I wish everyone a, a great holiday. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Director Lilloe. That That is exciting news. And I'm looking forward to the report outs in the coming year, two years, I guess. There's a lot of work to do, <laughs> a lot of good work. And so with that, thank you for reminding me it's Christmas. Um, happy holidays to everyone. And um, I guess uh, happy new year because we won't be back until January.
Merry Christmas. Happy and New Year. with that, it is 433 and this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>